Good morning, welcome to St. Matthew's Cathedral. I'm so glad you're joining us for worship. Please let us begin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, in whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry out to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I say, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him. That his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall 
shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. A reading from the second letter of Paul. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with God one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved? and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. As I was reading the book of Deuteronomy, I came across a funny turn of phrase. Now, the book of Deuteronomy is written with Moses and the, addressing the people of Israel uh, before they crossed the river Jordan into the land of promise. And Moses says to the people on behalf of the Lord, the Lord has begun a good work in you. I say, wait a second. It's more like finished a good work. I mean, after all, it's been 40 years since they left Egypt. 
they've escaped from the land of slavery. They had the whole, you know, Passover thing. That's a big thing, right? And then they went through the Red Sea. And that, I would imagine that would be an extraordinary event. So they go through the Red Sea. They've received the law at Sinai. They've done 40 years of discipline and worship in the wilderness. And now, just across the Jordan from the Promised Land itself, you might be asking with the Israelites, what do you mean, begun a good work? We know from the story that God was not finished with Israel when they crossed over the River Jordan. It's not like God said, okay, Hebrews, check, got them into the land of promise, moving on. Let's, let's take on the, let's take on, you know, the, uh, the Egyptians now, or the Assyrians, or the Hittites. You know, like, I'm going to move on to a different people. No, no, no. This is only the first five books. I remember the uh, in the Muppet movie, and uh, they one of the Muppet movies recently. They you know all the characters get together and the band they get the band together and they go back to their old theater and they're gonna kind of get the whole thing going again, get the Muppet show started, and they all come to the you know the Muppets kind of you know and they all come up to the fence and the place is shuttered and they, they had the chain link fence around it that's locked and one of the characters says. This is going to be a really short movie. <laughs> Making someone new, creating a new, is always the beginning of the story that God tells to us. After all, that's how the Bible begins in the Greek. In Genesis 1, chapter 1, in Greek, it begins arche, in the beginning, with a new creation. And that's how St. Mark starts his gospel, and it's not by accident. Literally, his good news of Jesus starts with the Greek word arche, in the beginning. It's as if everything that went before, the entire history of Israel, is just a glorious prologue. It's like kind of like that script in the Star Wars movies, you know, the, where you know it's kind of like that script kind of disappears in the background, and the entire Old Testament is just that, like that, a couple paragraphs, and then the story begins. Indeed, Saint Mark seems to suggest by the title of his work that the next sixteen chapters of his good news of Jesus Christ are themselves simply the beginning, just the beginning, to what God is up to as the women discover the empty tomb at the end. Jesus' victory over sin, hatred, and death is the good news. Everything is the beginning, which begins here at the resurrection. Easter morning is the new beginning that itself prepares the way for the arche of the new heaven and the new earth spoken of in Peter's second letter and spoken of in the witness of the Bible from Isaiah all the way to Revelation. By beginning with arche, the beginning, St. Mark lets us know that the story he is going to tell, the story that we are being asked to live into, like God's story, like eternity itself, is open-ended. It's a beginning of journeys, from Galilee to Golgotha, from slavery to freedom, from sin into righteousness, from death into life. And so it is with our story, too, both together as St. Matthew's Cathedral and as individuals. There is both a challenge and a hope in God's archaic, in God's beginning. On the one hand, the challenge is that we are never finished, that we can never say, ah, I know all that I need to know. I've made all the progress I need to make. 
I've served all the ways that I can serve. I've helped all the people that I can help. We have never arrived. That's the challenge of God's archaic. We get to the wherever we are, and God says, great, a good beginning. Now, let's take another step forward into my future. Into a future as broad as eternity itself. We are never finished. We are never a completed work on this side of the resurrection. We can never say we've done all that we've been asked to do. We can never say that I've paid my dues, I've finished, now it's someone else's turn to bear the heat of the day. Sometimes God's archaic, his beginning in our life, can be painful. Where we, because it means that we have to give up a lot of what went before. We have to let the past go. And sometimes that can be painful. Sometimes that can be frightening. Like the Israelites, who their past was all they knew. Their past was what they had. That's what set them apart from everybody else. But Jesus was challenging them to let that go and to embrace a future in which God's people was everybody. God was just making a beginning with Israel. Israel was just the archaic of God's people. They were just the beginning of what God was up to in the world, not the end. That can be painful for us sometimes. Sometimes we can get to a point in our life where we think, well, 40 years is enough of a prologue. We can get to a point where we say, I'm tired. But God says it's just an archaic. It's just the beginning. There's more yet to come. There is more work to be done. On the other hand, God's archaic is good news. Precisely because God is never finished with us. Precisely because we are never a completed work. God never says, check, I've done all I can do with Rob Price. Check, I've done all I can do with Linda Hodge. That's it. Okay, moving on to the next person. That's it. It's just an arcade. It's just a beginning. And that's a good thing. Because, for goodness sake, I have a lot to learn. I have a lot that needs to be healed. I have wounds that need to be closed. God never moves on from us. Like, we get to the end of a book, even a very long book, like the Harry Potter series. I mean, I didn't want that to end, but sure enough, it did end, and I had to put the seventh book down, and that was the end. No more Harry Potter. Right? But it's never like that with us and God. God never puts us down like a book he's finished and can never, in a sense, read again. We're always open. We're an open-ended story. We're an archaic, a beginning of God's good news. The good news that St. Mark is beginning to tell us and which we must begin to hear is that every day is an archaic. A beginning of God's good news of new life rising up in us. God's archaic tells us that no failure is final. No disappointment is a true defeat. That no labor is in vain. And that no wrong turn is a dead end. Indeed, until the end, until the resurrection itself, every moment we live is the moment of God's archaic. 
his creation being redeemed and restored in Jesus Christ, his son, living in us and we in him. The resurrection of Jesus happened 2,000 years ago, more or less. But God is always beginning to raise things up. He is always making an archaic. The good news that we proclaim every advent to the world as God's people is that God is just getting started. And that is indeed, that is indeed the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one essence and undivided. We believe in one God, the Father, the Lord Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God did not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified by the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and in the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also to bless and protect our armed forces and first responders, and so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, 
that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, including all those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for our frontline medical workers, our teachers, and for all those working on a vaccine. We pray in thanksgiving for the ordination of Trent Pettit to the sacred order of priests and for Father Trent's new ministry as priest to four parishes in East Texas. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon me, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. And that should change your things. Well, good morning again, and welcome to St. Matthew's Cathedral, our live stream of our 8 o'clock service. I'm so glad you're joining us for worship, either now or if you watch it later in the day. That, that works, too. And uh, this being the first Sunday of the month is Birthday Blessing Sunday. So if you have a birthday in the month of December, all you Christmas babies or Advent babies, I hope that your families are giving you separate Christmas presents. You deserve them, right? My mother's birthday is on December 26th, so I was, I was trained that way. So I hope your families do the same for you. And uh, let us uh, offer up a, a prayer of thanksgiving for your birthdays. Almighty God, we give you thanks for all your servants who celebrate the anniversary of their birth this month. We pray that when they fall, that you would raise them up. And where they're weak, they would know your strength. That when they're joyful, that they would find their joy complete in you. And finally, that you would bring them into your kingdom, for the voices of those who feast and celebrate is never ceasing. And I bless you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And 
As we continue our uh, walk towards Christmas, it is, we're still in stewardship season. And uh, so just to encourage you that uh, our vestry will be meeting on December 15th to take in hand the pledges that have been made for the upcoming ministry year. So I encourage you to get your pledge in uh, either by mail or you can go online. We have, you can do it through the website. Uh, you could call it in actually to Dara Bickham in the office and she would be happy to take it from you. And, uh, and so I encourage you to allow us to have those pledges in hand so that we can make good decisions and, and God's spirit can give us wisdom as we plan the coming year in ministry. Coming up also in ministry is next Sundays at 4 p.m. our Lessons and Carols service. I hope you can join us outside the cathedral uh, for that service. It'll be a wonderful uh, celebration of scripture and song, and especially the, our beloved carols of the season. And uh, then on uh, the Sunday, the month, I guess eight days after that, we'll be celebrating the Feast of St. Thomas, which we celebrate as our Midwinter's Mass, with a special emphasis on those who uh, might not be feeling red and green, uh, but rather somewhat more blue this Christmas. So I encourage you to join us for that at 5.30 on Monday, if that's something that would uh, be a blessing to you. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, 
Because thou didst send thy beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, to make us heirs of him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, to take our nature upon him, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. From the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial that I hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech the merciful Father to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant and beseech thee that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and win him through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, for thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed them with your hearts by faith. We're next to them. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 